Welcome to Travel Baseball Coach Justin Podcast. Travel Baseball Coach Justin interviews travel baseball coaches, tournament directors, and former players from around the nation. Here's Travel Baseball Coach Justin. Travel Baseball Coach Justin Podcast. I'm Travel Baseball Coach Justin. And today we have Brian Fullerton from Legacy Sports. He's a tournament director. How you doing, Brian? Hey, how you doing? Thanks for having me. Um, well, thank you for being on. So, Brian, tell everybody a little bit about how you got started and how you got to where you're at right now. Well, uh, I go back a long time. I started actually playing slow pitch for 20, 30 years ago, it feels like. And uh, my buddy and I, we, we had a team together for many years. And as we got older, we had kids. We both started um, needing different incomes and such. And so he kind of went slow pitch. I went fast pitch. And uh, he was running tournaments. I chose to go umpiring and being an official. Uh, I became a pretty high-level umpire in the area and uh, worked darn near seven days a week, as many games as possible. And a uh, big reason was because my daughter started playing slow, uh, I'm sorry, uh, travel ball herself. And as you know, guys, it's hard income on your family and such and you know and all the expenses that come along with that so uh I went from playing slow pitch tournaments to making money at fast pitch tournaments and then that's kind of where it started and then you know about eight nine years ten years into this um we had COVID hit and uh when COVID came um I was already about a year into slowing down I was a teacher for 20 years. I worked with kids already. And um, like I said, this was all my side income. COVID came. I started working for a, 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 um, another program solely. And like I said, when COVID hit, I lost everything, uh, all our income, um, anything and everything you could think of. And it was very devastating for everybody around. So after three months, um, you know, doing Instacart, trying to figure out how to save my home, my wife and I were getting phone calls from, from teams uh, that knew me. I got phone calls from different umpires um, and such. And so we started doing what we called underground softball games. And uh, we would go to random fields and, and, um, and play softball. And um, I got paid to go and, and, and be a part of it. And uh, the softball community just was like stepping up and it was awesome. So, you know, what ended up happening was my buddy, that um, owned Legacy Sports, Dustin Hall. He called me up and said, hey bud, why don't you come out to Klamath Falls and um, run a softball tournament, make some money, save the date. As uh, some of you guys know out there, if you usually, when you use a weekend and you get a, get a tournament, a, a location, you're grandfathered in for future events in the following years. And so all, all he needed me to do, bro, was go out there and uh, basically save the date. He was running in Medford at the, at, you know, at the time it was US Cellular. And he needed to just to secure that because we were thinking outside the box years prior and trying to grow a legacy outside of, um, you know, we're mainly from California, Sacramento area. And we were thinking outside the box, how can we grow our brand? So anyway, he, he knew I was hurting and say, hey, come on out there, man. And I was like, dude, I am a umpire. Yes, I'm a tournament director, but I get paid to be a director. I don't own or nothing. I, I was like, okay, so that morning, I uh, posted a little something on social media and said, hey, guys, I uh, got, got an opportunity up in Klamath Falls, Oregon. It's five hours away, but anybody want interested, just let me know. So, Justin, I went out. I umpired six games, underground games, and uh, I come back that afternoon, and I'm not kidding. I had 70-plus messages from 70 separate teams that said, what let's go we're looking mind you at that time three or four months of no ball keep inside you know california was very strict oh yeah it was, it was shut down oh uh, down 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 we, we were right. inundated in, because Medford's only 30 miles north of on i-5 right oregon from california and we were inundated with players like uh i know that a couple um other like um uh, baseball uh, teams around here picked up ringers just so that they can hang banners and stuff like that because they could. And because California was literally shut down for those four months. So yeah. here you are saying, Hey, we can play, but we have to go over the border, which is great. And boom. Yeah. Run with them. That's really what happened, you know? And it was interesting because depending on what part of Oregon you were in, um, 
blue versus red type situation at the time, you know, it was, uh, you know, we were in Southern Oregon, obviously, and, and Southern Oregon is a little different than Northern and Portland side. And so we, you know, we, 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 the point was, was get the kids on the ball field. We, the first few names of our events was let them play. And how can we do this? You know, and it had money had zero implications. It was purely, purely, purely about the kids and the families and the, you know, the, the emotional need for the game that we love. And, and I mean, there's a lot of truthful and seriousness to that. You know, um, you know, we, we, we had a few of our kids, um, you know, commit suicide and actually get, get really um, depressed because of COVID. And I didn't mind and care at the moment, at the time, like that we were told to stay off the ball fields. I was like, I'm sorry, I'm a childcare teacher for 20 years. I'm all, I'm an advocate for the sport and the game. I will do what it takes to get the kids on ball fields on the game. So that's where the underground part comes in and, you know, being kicked off. So anyway, back to the, the how we got out there part, you know, uh, 70 teams hits me up, man. And, and I called Dustin up. I'm like, bro, what do I do? I, uh, what do I do? And uh, you know, time, stamp them. <laughs> time stamp them. And we, well, first we had to figure out how many teams we could take right. because out there they don't have lights and such anyway. So we figured out the dynamic of it and, I, I was able to take 32 teams. Um, I instantly grabbed, I reached out to them, said, hey, 32 teams. We got um, a, an event to go. It was so touching for so many people at that time. It still gives me chills. It gives me chills to know what we really, truly started and did at that time. So, so at that time as well, now mind you, umpires are independent contractors. Um, and I might have quit my job teaching wise a year prior to COVID and started working for this other program full time. But um, the, the person I was working for was, was, wasn't very happy that I chose to go out, you know, and start and run a tournament. And, and, and so we, he and I had some heavy discussions about it. And one thing I thought I was being taught that whole time was, you know, family first, your happy wife, happy life, you know, like the whole, you got to take care of your family to be able to take care of others. And so I was very disappointed with, with his decision. He said, Hey, you know what, if you, do, if you run a tournament, you'll never work for me again. And I said, well, my family comes first. Your family has always come first to me. Yeah. And, and, and I helped build your program from day one. And he said, have a nice life. I went, okay, cool. Click. Right. I called up Dustin. I said, Hey D. And mind you, Dustin was reaching out to me for close to five years and asking me, Hey, right. come on, let's, let's build this legacy thing. Let's build this legacy thing. Cause at the time when I joined legacy, you know, Dustin was just a really strong, um, you know, slow pitch program, uh, very prominent, very well ran the adult slow pitch, the adult slow pitch. Correct. Also. Yeah. 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 Uh, the adult program. And um, like I said, he just wanted me to save a date out there in Klamath Falls. So anyway, I, um, you know, next thing I know, he said, hey, here's one more date. Let's just start here. And then, and which was one month later, I took the other um, half of those teams. So another, the other 30 plus teams, we ran another um, a month later. It was one was a September, one was an October. And by the end of that October, because of what we already did for the, for the softball community, it, it already caught wind and, and, and everything, and it just took off. And so from there, with the other program, let me go, you know, my wife and I looked at each other and said, let's, let's do this. That's right. And um, Dustin sh full on said, let's go. And um, as you know, the name of my main event in Medford is called Bring It On. And so the original reason we named it the, the, the 2020 Bring It On was it was a lot of meaning. I oh, mean, gave me chills, dude. Just the story is awesome. I haven't told the story in a long time, man. Um, uh, you know, it was all about bring it on. Let's go, you know, bring it on. And not only bring it on in my, you know, building this program um, or I'm sorry, at that time, it was just throwing some tournaments, by the way, you know, it wasn't full on go, go, but bring it on was like to challenge the other person that said, you know, don't do this. And, right. and you know, so yeah, it was awesome, man. Really 70. Yeah. yeah, it was all. Yeah. 74 teams, Justin. Yeah. I took 74 teams from California, Washington, Oregon, Canada showed up. 
um, uh, Nevada, 74 teams in Medford in the middle of freaking the winter time. And during COVID, when we were told not to play, and there were all these stipulations. And if you guys remember back then, at that time, we were not allowed to have anywhere. And, and you guys have a, did, uh, I'm sorry, um, Oregon had a different um, structure as us in California. We were yeah. color codes. And, you know, you guys went by, you know, if I remember right, it was um, um, levels or something like that. Uh, but your level had changed. And, and at the, the two weeks prior, we were only allowed to have 50 people per field, right? And that was including, that and that was in, yeah. including players. And so if you've got nine, you know, we went with the number nine, <laughs> nine players on each side, we accounted for two coaches and we accounted for one parent. And we were, you know, so that number truly was around 70 or 80. Um, per field and so Medford was well, like hey that it was anyway so it's it didn't hurt anything well no but at that time you know we didn't want to ruffle feathers we also didn't want to get shut down we didn't want to have 74 teams where the people show up in Medford and then all of a sudden oh hey you're done shut down and everyone go home like that would have been just you know my nerve my nerves are rotten man I mean I got a little gray here and there after that event I didn't have it before that so here's how extreme it was Medford said we'll let you do this but what we're going to do is, is we're going to follow every policy possible that, that the state is being asked of us. We had arrows on the, on, on, the, on the sidewalks. They all had to go in one direction and out the other. We could not start a game until every single player, every single person left the park and ran back in the other side, man. Such a crazy time. And it was, we actually, and obviously we, we pulled it off. Uh, we, we sanitized the dugouts. We, we, uh, Every game, you know, I mean, there, we, we had to mask up, um, you know, it was just, but guess what, dude, we did it. And not only did we did it, but it, it was so successful, it just took off. And so now here I am today, darn near two and a half years later, almost three years later, and we have got one of the biggest programs, built programs on the whole entire West Coast. We are running teams from, like I said, from up and down the coast. I'm getting emails and, 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 and such from um, teams that I only dreamed of, or I only loved umpiring, you know, um, on their big time games. And, and now these coaches. So that's another thing, by the way. So when we started advertising in the beginning, they were like, who's legacy, who's legacy, you know, like it was like all in the hush anyway. And um, then we started running some underground tournaments up in uh, Orville, California. And, and, and Orville was a great spot because it was in the middle of nowhere. And, Nevada found out and Oregon found out and they're like, I had to keep, I had to, you know, that was a whole nother challenge, but people were coming and playing, but you know, um, it, it just kind of took off and um, I kind of forgot what I was, <laughs> what my whole point to that, but was, you know, we. Um, well, it was the size of legacy in your marketing, whether people knew you and didn't know you. Yes. Then you yes. Know. So, so once I got out there and the team started seeing my actual face because at the time it was just a couple of us umpires, buddies of mine. And we would just, you know, we would just run out of tournament, single man games, make it happen. We satisfied a lot of people and I was rotating them out. They found out it was Brian. They found out it was me. Yeah. And mind you, Justin, I, I brought, when I umpire, I'm a little different as an umpire. I, I believe in teaching the game and during pool plays. I believe in tons of communication and then come, you know, serious moment in the games. There, there's a time to officiate differently. Now, with that said, I've built my whole reputation and career based on that. And, and I got every day for months, your, your legacy, Brian, legacy. Brian, it was the connections left and right. And it was just one team after another. And, and next thing I know, man, Dustin and I are trying to figure out how to, you know, build this because one problem in fast pitch and, and youth sports and travel baseball and all the youth sports really is lack of fields. There's not a lot of ball fields out there, brother. And, and, you know, it's really hard when these people want their money on top of it. The prices on some of these parks are outrageous. So there's a reason why the fees are as high as they are. You know, right. it's not the typical people, you know, lining my pockets and just, ha, 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 tournament's over. I made a part of this podcast is, is, is all that. Everything you do in the background, I mean. Oh, yeah. Stuff you do. Let's not get into it right now. I've got questions for that later. Of course, of course. 
But yeah, there's a whole mechanism going on on the tournament director side behind the scenes before, during, and after a tournament. That's ridiculous. Well, I'm glad you want to touch on that later because yeah. you know it's it's something that's um, what I would really like to showcase out to make sure people grasp yeah. what goes into it, what's behind in the whole show. So anyway, so that's what happened, man. And and then um, as I want to say it was June fifteenth of a uh, year and a half ago or two years ago now. California finally opened up, and um, as they opened up, it was so, so I, I still was trying to throw events out in um, Klamath Falls, um, but at that point, for some reason, teams really had a hard time getting off the beaten path off of I-5, and, you know, even though for Sacramento side and coming up, Klamath Falls is literally the exact same distance as Medford, right. and so people wanted to play in Medford instead, um, and we did, and, and Anyway, when they opened up Folsom, California, city of Folsom reached out to me and said, which is 30 ish minutes away from the person that I used to work for, for many, many, many years. And, um, I told my daughter's fast pitch team playing for legacy sports. I know Folsom yeah. field. Yes, you do. And so he, uh, he said, the last thing that the other guy that I used to work for said to me was, if you try to run anywhere near me, I will throw free tournaments around you and you oh, will be. He is not going to throw free tournaments. It costs him too much money. You oh, Justin. That. Oh, Justin. Uh, it's, it's all right. It's, it, let's leave it alone. Let's leave it alone. I don't want to. The only reason I say that was because I hesitated. I did hesitate because yeah, I didn't want to ruffle feathers. I am no, the nice no, guy. I am but... the good guy. I wanted to do what's right for everybody involved. And I figured at that time, I, I just needed enough money to support my family. That's all that started. Definitely. Stay hustle, stay humble, hustle hard. That's like you my, you know, right reasons. I mean, you're good. You're good. Yeah. So when Folsom called me up, I said, I don't know, guys, you know, I don't know about running local, but I'll try, you know, let's go ahead and do it one time. And little did I understand the severity of the situation. I sold out the first like five or six events oh, wow. and instantly, like instantly. And um, I realized, okay. I'm not afraid. Let's go. And next thing we know, man, it was, it's, this is what I have today. I've now joined with the Alliance um, for a lot of our events. Um, you know, Alliance is kind of like a, a PGF competitor. You know, it's like they want to promote a ball and such. So for people that don't know about the Alliance, it's, it's another program. It's, it gives the kids something more to play for than just a backyard tournament every weekend and win a shirt and a trophy and, and medals, you know, it's, it's, it's a little more to it. And, um, being that we're an independent program, if we don't have something more than that, then all we are is, is doing the same thing as, right. as the others and offering those free, you know, the trophies and such. So I, I'm really blessed to have them reach out to me and provide quality ball. Now, with that said, you know, we, um, we've gained dates. The first year they gave me like 16 dates or so, 16 weekends. <clears throat> this last year they jumped it up to like 24 well, now I'm up to 40. And so we're, we're course, one every other week. 40 is, I mean, you're at 80% of the weekend. Yes, sir. Excellent, dude. Sometimes I don't see my wife um, until late evenings when I get home on Sundays and we spend a couple of nights together and then, you know, but um, you know, we, anyway, we've got that all worked out, but it's, it's, it's a blessing, Justin, what we've been given an opportunity and um, I'm, I'm never, ever going to forget that feeling from coming from these humble beginnings to what I have now and what we're about to build. And, you know, legacy sports is quietly, but quickly just dominated in the areas. And, and it's all about customer service. It's all about the families. It's, it's listening, you yeah. know? And, and, and so. And I'm a testament to that because here's the thing, Brad was the first tournament director. I was able to go up to nonchalantly and say, Hey, I'm so-and-so I have an idea um and he was he just totally listened and said yeah let's see if we can make that work he connected me with dustin um i'm working on an invitational in medford for the 11 u and so i've got a couple of dates that i'm working with to get these uh just the really good teams of out of washington idaho uh northern oregon california nevada and i want to get like 10 to 12 really good uh, 11 u teams where i'm hoping mm -hmm. like we're the worst of all the 11 u teams because <laughs> we want to play the best of the best right tournament best of the best without having to go to san diego without having to go to yeah. seattle 
I mean, we will travel there at 12 you and above, but we're 11 you this year. We're still going to keep it within eight hours. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, <laughs> Which I found out the hard way or the quick way with you guys up in Oregon area, man, for you guys to travel, I mean, to play anything, you guys have got to travel, true travel, four to six to eight hours. I, I met people from Portland all the way down from Washington. I met so many of you guys in the last two years. I built some amazing relationships, but I'm sure learning a lot you know, down here in Sacramento, bro, we, we were saturated, you yeah, know, and, 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 and in any hour direction, any hour direction, there's hundreds of teams. Yeah. Hundreds. And, and, and I'm fascinated with what you do. I watch, I follow you, Justin. I've been following you since uh, your very first video and I got a big, great kick out of it. And it's, I love your comic gold on top of your seriousness at this combination. So the reason why you caught my eye was it's, it's, you travel so much and what you do for not only your kid, but for everyone's kids. Yeah. That's legacy, bro. It, well, it, it, here's the thing is that um, there's not a, a team that we play out there that I don't want to be friends with the coaches and other travel teams because um, we started, the general started during COVID as well. Exact same time as that you did. And I had to find nine new baseball players that wanted to travel. And then let's, and we didn't know where we were, we were going and, you know, because like you said, COVID hit, um, but we did, we, we did K Falls, we did, uh, Medford was open. People were from the North were coming down to Medford because we had, um, those standards that you had mentioned in your tournament when you were in at US cell fields at the time, now lifting driveway fields. Um, but what was uh, really interesting is I, we, I literally only found 13 kids. And uh, we only took 11 at tryouts. And so um, it was difficult. But, oh, yeah. uh, but, the, but the thing is, is I knew how difficult I went through. And that's the reason why I started what I did here, you know, a couple months ago is uh, all last year, I was getting phone calls um, from the Southern Oregon General's Facebook page because there was a previous team that started at 10U and went through 16U. And then I took over that page with my phone number. And last year, I got all these phone calls for kids for 13U, 14U, 10U, 11U, moving into Medford. And I'd be like, oh, hey, here's here's this coach, here's this coach, here's this coach. I'm like, are you guys moving to north side or uh, south side of Medford? Are you moving to Grants Pass, Central Point? Where, where are you moving would be my first question. And then I'd try and get them with that team. Mm -hmm. um, now, if they were you know, a good 10 year old, I'd be like, well, we're kind of, we're, we're, we don't <laughs> dedicate ourselves to a, a school or an area. We just will take anybody that's, you know, really right. good. And, true travel. Mm -hmm. And to travel. And, right, and, right. True and, travel. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, true travel. And so, um, so last year, I think I kicked out, I think I got about 22, 23 calls of kids coming into Medford that oh, wow. I had sent to Powerhouse, to Gas House, to North, to South, to Crater. Mm -hmm. Um, and just giving them those coaches, because I had like 50 coaches. Every time I, I played a game, I'm like, hey, what's your number? I want, I want your number in case I want to scrimmage you guys. You know, that, right, that was always right, my course. lead in to get their number. And what, for me, what's really nice is I, I was able to label it uh, kind of intelligently from the beginning, mm -hmm. which was uh, I put it under coach space hyphen, then their name, program, and what age group they were. And so anytime I needed a coach, I just typed in the word coach and then I just go through my list and I'd be able to get it. Really <laughs> you should see my phone. <laughs> I get it. By accident that I did that and I, I look back like, it's continued it. I'm, like, I'm yeah. so glad I put coach at the oh, beginning of all these contacts because I wouldn't know what their name is or what even the team that I didn't play, but I was, I ended up talking to them on the sidelines. So um, wait till they all start aging up and you, and you have to, you're like, Oh, are they, what age group are they in there? That's my hardest well, problem. Luckily, with I can the edit button. It has like the date, the date I put it in there. So if it's ten U and my kids, yeah, I might have to borrow that. Thirteen U right now. So. All right, I got you. I might have to borrow yeah. that. So, but anyway, uh, but that's that's me. Um, yeah. uh, so how how long is the tournament season for Legacy Sports? I mean, is there an off season at all? Is there a month off, a week off? Well, um, if uh, we look outside right now, we might be thinking the season's over. Right. Uh, we deal with all this rain and everything uh, on and honestly it just matters of uh rain or not um uh, during the winter months and and early spring i um uh, i try to run on on turf fields and um you know so ultimately we don't stop okay we try our best to keep going year round now it gets challenging during you know january 
it gets challenged. December's okay because there's still a lot of girls and families getting ready to go off to school and, and uh, even though it's, you know, they're, they're, they're making choices. So like, you know, really the fall, um, but, but I do a lot of toys for tot tournaments. So a lot of my winter events starting in November, um, I do a huge, huge, huge food drive that has been very successful through the last two straight years. We've actually saved 30 or 40 families during that time. And I've huge donations and, you know, I mean, it's, it's just, it's been great. And then we do during December, we have a couple really, really big um, toys for tot tournaments we do. And uh, we either ask for people to, to sponsor kids. My wife is a um, major part of my program as well. And what she does is she, she helps support a lot of these on these different Facebook groups. She belongs to these um, and helps out young moms that needed a little extra help in life and, and yeah. such. So she, she had a lot of these connections, with these people that needed help. So we, a lot of our, those tournaments, man, we, we are all about helping out people and things. And then, so so come January, it gets a little iffy. Um, that's why we, we, a lot of my events around those times uh, are in Redding, California at the Big League Dreams program. I go way back with them. Uh, the manager and I play ball against, with each other, against each other. And, um, you know, and so we, a lot of connections. It's all about who you know sometimes and it's what you prove on top of that after that. It's not always it's not given to you don't get me wrong but you know it's it's sometimes it's a matter of hey trust me and let's see what you get anyway so we run there once a month and um that's really key to me on our program to continue to keep going and keep what we call dustin and i call the momentum yeah. you know um those events are you know they're they're break-even type events as far as the financial business side um i don't like to say that i run a business or we run a business because I don't treat it as a business. I treat it as I'm helping families, you know, I'm, those families are supporting my family. So with that said, you know, we, we go to Met, uh, we go to Medford in our huge one in February, they took a chance on us and they won and we won. So right after that, um, this last year, in fact, we partnered, we were true partners with city of Medford. And um, I took over their main events for Fast Pitch with the hopes of growing Fast Pitch um, and youth sports in Medford. You know, um, you know, no knock on you guys being that you're, you know, um, baseball programs and youth baseball. But, you know, with the with the with the girls, you know, Justin, we we don't it's 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 a lot different you know girls and youth sports only have so far to go you know and and in, and in a male dominated type settings you know there's college and semi pros and pros and but the girls yeah you know there's colleges everywhere up your guys's way and you, i'm sure you guys see a little more of that but you know we we battle with what they're going to go through next so and then they become, and um, you know, there's no pro pro. I mean, there's only what 10 teams, I think that are true pro for, for fast pitch right. um, professionally. I believe, I believe it's around 10 or so. And so there's at least six. Cause I saw the there was, well, at one point, yeah, it, it yeah. jumped. And then those people, so, and then those investors actually had a hard time. And so that's why it never grew kind of like, you know, with like the WNBA, you know, how many people of us can actually name the teams or name the players? So like right. my big thing is, is I really want to push on how to get more fields, more games, more for our females, for our girls. Yeah. And that's where Medford came up to us and said, Hey, you know, <clears throat> here's these events. They've never been actually, you know, more that successful. Um, we want to do something and see you through a 74 team tournament. And, 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 and no disrespect, Brian, but nobody knew who you guys were. And, and, and you brought us all this, all this, and it's, and it's not just the park making their, you know, theirs, but it's the, the, the restaurants, the hotels, the community, the community fell in love with us. Um, and, and we helped a ton of people out of that time. So with that said, they took us said, here's these four events, the spring fling, um, right. The, the four, that's it. That's all and, my daughter played every year was four. And four. Played, except for traveling. Yep. Yeah. And Justin, I don't know if you guys, I don't know if you know the numbers behind it, but we saw the breakdown and it won the, the biggest year, the biggest year between four events. Think about the numbers on this was 48 teams. 
um, I, it might have been 44, but it was like 40 something teams was the max that they had had in a full four team, four events. That was probably pre COVID, too. It was pre COVID. I'm talking, it was pre COVID. COVID wiped out a whole yeah. one year. That yeah. one year is gone. Done. Yeah. So, my very first partnered event, our, our very first partnered event with Legacy, uh, with, with Medford, we brought, I think, 22 teams. And City of Met, I mean, to me, 22 teams is average under well, average. oh no, no i mean uh, my parks down here we're running i mean uh 30 is usually our minimum you know and, and and that's a great number you know so for a complex that has eight fields of gorgeousness of the best on the west coast other than you know we've got golden eagle and over and you know that's another one of my favorite yeah, places yeah. you know but but i saw i saw potential to maxing that place out every time. And so that first, so our goal with city of Medford was to reach 44 teams and go up. And we wanted to show them that we can bring them more than, than what they did in one tournament than they did in all four. So it took, it took a little time. The first one was like 20 something teams. The, we did the next one. I believe it was the uh, spring fling we we ended up at um, like 28 or so, um, and I think that's about the max. And then we did the we last year we called it the Mother's Day tournament because mother, it was on Mother's Day. But little did I find out by some of the black tornadoes and some of the the powerhouse, you know, all the local the local kids. They came up to me and said, Brian, Brian, why did you name the why did you change the name of the tournaments? And I was like, What do you mean, girls? Queen in May. Halloween in May. I got hounded, bro. I had no idea. Okay? Even I knew that. Now I'm a triple baseball coach. <laughs> you little baseball guys, man. I had no idea, bro. I would, and as we've shared, I'm a big, yeah. you know, I'm a child care teacher and I'm all about the kids and the high fives and all yada yada, man. So when these little ones came up to me, one particular named Julia, um, and she came up to me and, and she's like, you know, Brian, I really want to dress up next year. And I said, all right, kiddo, I got you. So I called up the city and I was like, hey, why didn't you guys tell me? I would have kept the same names, you know? And, yeah. and so this year we named it, you know, we went back to it and did, I, I got some cool emails from these kids up there. And anyway, so, so all last year was great. It worked out. It was like, hey, you know, the May was, it was okay. We had enough. We actually brought in over 60 teams for the four events. Um, I wasn't, my, my goal was higher. Right. But we beat their goal. And their goal was, hey, if you bring in more than 44 between these four tournaments, you were successful. And I just was like, wow, that's that's a low bar for me. So this year, okay, this year, we just ran our first our first of them last week. We were we were up there. Um, and I believe our final number was 24. Okay, so I think it was only 24 for the first one. Well, in two weeks, we'll be up there. Um, um, I'm sorry, three weeks in um, April 15th and 16th. And right this second, we were sitting at 48 teams. Wow. April 15th and 16th. Hey, big congratulations there. Holy smokes, dude. And that's not counting the May one, brother. May, right, right now, May, we're sitting at, I want to say, the last I checked, maybe 34, 36, something like right, that. But they'll, they'll, they'll trickle in. Well, it's so it's funny you say that. Mondays are one of my hardest days. Uh, Monday mornings are rough because I get a plethora of emails and comments and, and, and our social media is going crazy and it's, it's always a plus. And then I get all these signups on a Monday and I'm just, it's, you know, it's tiresome time because that's, you know, all the planning and also the emotional, you know, relaxing and before we start the process for the next weekend and, and such. And, but then it's like, man, I, I'll look over at my wife and be like, honey, Wow! Look, so and so signed up. Um, I can't believe this team. And you know, I I I, I still get starstruck by um by certain teams and players and, and programs. I just, I, I'm very thankful that they reach out and trust that you know they're we're, they're giving us the service you know to their kids. So so, um, Medford has just went from eh eh to yeah. right. And now you know we're gonna have a hundred teams for them or more. Um, just you know, this year for the year for these events. So they're, I, I hope that they're very excited with what this partnership has done. And, and, and I'm going to be very, very honest with you. And, and I know everybody's listening, but 
um, the goal is to bring many more dates up there and um, yeah, don't tell anybody, but we have gained about three more dates and we'll be Good. exposing those very soon. I have not started promoting them yet because Medford actually just gave us the old wow good job yeah well, how about if i just wanted this and this and that date and i'm like great thank you guys so i hey, i want a weekend up there where there's no snow yeah smoke. I can take my no smoke uh, no smoke yeah. that was a oh, fun year oh uh, man i well let's not get into it that that was two years ago and it just, yeah 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 so um to kind of briefly so you, there is no stop to the season. You just kind of slow down towards the end of December. For it's the truly a slowdown, and it's weather-based, honestly. Right. And then what states uh, do you cover for uh, softball tournaments? Just So when we started, obviously, and I shared that story, is, you know, we started in Oregon only because we had to. Right. I progressed back into California. And mind you, I live near – I live in Rio Linda, which is near near Sacramento. Yeah. Um, they reached out to me, and I, I – stood up for myself and the program and we started building in Folsom. And then it went from there to, um, I was like, all right. So during COVID, I was telling you guys about the, the underground stuff and, yeah. Orville and all that. Well, all these teams from, from Nevada caught wind and they were coming over the hill every week. And, and, and I had to rotate age groups and teams because I only had so much field space. So then they were, when, when we opened up in Nevada, Nevada was very strict by the way. I, Wait, I know we had no, Nevada they, was the worst. They canceled the day before we took off to drive yep. down there, February 27th, 28th of 2020 or 2020. Yeah. And I was like, oh man. And then bro, yeah, the yeah. the what they wanted, okay, not just now. I'm when I say they, I mean the state. Right. Not just these pro not, you know, because a lot of the cities and 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 parks and fields, they were very nervous that they were yeah. gonna be, yeah, you know, getting I but mean, nobody knew at the time. Nobody knew where the liability landed. No, right. What was going on. And then at that time, remember how freaked out everyone was. And so if, if, if we run a tournament and someone gets sick and dies and such, well, it's like, well, you know. That's what the waivers were for. That we, as coaches, we were all signing. Parents were all signing. We all did. I had yeah. my own. I, I yeah. still have it. I, I, I have it actually sitting here and I joke about it. And I'm like, wow, we I'm sure like, are coming a long way. So, but Nevada, they were, this is how extreme they were. They needed a full plan of attack. They wanted to know where you were putting your, your hand stations, where you were going to walk, yeah. where the coaches were going to stand, where the families were going to part. It was that extreme, man. And, and so I didn't want to touch Nevada at that time. I was just like, this is too much. I way too much. But then when they opened up, a lot of those families that were traveling over here got a taste of not only, um, you know, thankfulness and all the good feels of the game and why follow Brian and legacy for, sticking their neck out and and all that right but it was a little bit more now became the training training of the umpires the the actual ins and outs of my website um how i do my bracketing um you know and such so all of that come into play and and what i wanted and and that's where the the true quality of what i was trying little did i know that we were starting to really green gain traction and blow up and so i got my first opportunity to run a tournament out in um in uh, garnerville um which is about 20 minutes past um about 20 minutes east-ish of um uh lake tahoe it's about 15 minutes south of carson city and about an hour south of, of reno and it's a beautiful hidden gem and uh, man, did I fall in love with that place, bro. And just, we just threw a tournament there. We got one opportunity in Reno, not a big fan of Reno um, fields anyway and such. And so those families and things, I want to bring them more opportunities. But so what we did was we started throwing some tournaments out of Fernley. Uh, they have some really nice fields and nice, just the, the atmosphere is cool. Right. Uh, we were always trying to, you know, we're working on, dates at golden eagle and other places and you know a lot of people had it all on the lockdown but but what a lot of these other associations didn't have is this personality and the uh, drive there were these tournaments in town in around and those teams were choosing to go over the hill and come, we call over the hill for you oregon people right. <laughs> coming from sacramento. Yeah. yeah yeah they coming over the hill to the sacramento area and they all just wanted to play ball over here when they had a tournament five minutes from their house. So 
based on quality, they were like, no, I'd rather travel two hours yeah. because I get the quality. So, yeah. so that's really when it, when it started. So the answer to your question, I'm now, I mean, we're running in Nevada, you know, uh, Sacramento areas, California, you know, Oregon. Um, we've touched base with some, now I'm branching into like Washington. We, we had a few conversations about some places up there. Uh, we've been reached out from, um, another, another, uh, big program down in Arizona that's looking to, for us to grab, um, some fields, Idaho, Idaho is, is yeah. really, yeah, Treasure I Valley, think that's Nampa, Boise, that Nampa, was area. Nampa, yeah, uh-huh. yeah there's Golden, uh, not Golden, Eagle, yep. but Eagle uh, Idaho, yeah. That's 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 probably gonna be the next on the line. Now, now that's just the answer to your question though. With that is also is that's just the 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 fast pitch side of it. Right. Dust, Dustin Hall, you know, the run, that's the owner yeah. and, and um of, of the slow pitch side and the whole thing. Dustin this last year really thought outside the box, and and, uh, and, and so he's he's now running events in New York, in Florida in texas we ran we ran in 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 idaho um you know so dustin's goal is to start branding out and reaching out to these other states and provide what we the the quality that we have there's there's got to be quality because as you know the perception of tournament directors isn't the best when they and all these people out there think that we're all just trying to make money based programs and I'm sorry, I'm proving this. And I will say this out loud often because it's, it's, it's gotta be about the families. The money's going to come and go, man. Yeah. So, so um, oh, goodness yeah, we reached, we reached some, we've reached a few states. Okay. So a few months ago, there was one weekend that we were running in eight states in one weekend, eight states, oh, boy. eight. It was awesome. And I, I don't know how Dustin did it. I don't know how Dustin did it. Cause I was only, I personally was running in only two. Right. Um, but it was like, how do you do it? You know, there were major human humongous events, you know, and, and mind you, I call them events. I don't call them tournaments. Um, and so these events were going on and he, uh, he had 20 teams or so in each area. And, and, um, he, I'm very proud of what, you know, he's, he started and, and he's trying to reach out and, and have me do eventually. And, but I believe in a certain amount of growth at a certain time, because otherwise you're going to distract your whole Yeah, You'll get too quality. big too fast and quality drop. And this is what was really attractive when I was watching my daughter play at these legacy sports. And I want to just dive into your umpires. Um, sure. So you travel with your own umpires when you go to, with your events at the locations, you don't, sure. you, know, you will borrow some local ones. if, if sometimes. Necessary. sometimes. Yeah. Um, but my daughter came up to me and as one thing I noticed, the first legacy sports I went to was uh, at BLD in Reading, Big League mm-hmm. Trees. And I noticed that there was a calmness amongst the parents. There wasn't a lot of screaming and hollering at the umpires on calls and stuff. And I'm like, wow, this is like, why? either a yeah. bunch of laid back parents mm-hmm. or uh, where they're not paying attention. But the skill level, I was like, no, they pay attention. There's something different. And it wasn't until my daughter walked up and handed me this coin she had received from your umpire and and i'll get into the story of, yeah that i'll get into the story of I just happened to have story. it been there by the way <laughs> yeah her story on that which i think is really fantastic and is what has led to uh the humanizing of umpires uh between the coaches yep. the ball players and even the parents because when i saw this coin i was like oh my god this is so cool and i didn't even know this was going on but um but but so sure. two things you have great umpires yeah. number one and then you have these coins you're holding up right there. Go ahead and talk about that. That That is, I love this. Well, so, and I know I've touched on this with you a few, few times now about my childcare background, you know, and um, when I joined and I started umpiring in the first place, uh, the biggest reason I was umpiring was obviously I needed money for my daughter's travel ball, but we, we kept getting these umpires in our rec program that would come out and they were like the nicest guys you ever met. Right. Like just kind. And they would either give out candy to the kids when they on certain plays, they would just throw in to have fun. Now they were, you know, age catches up to a lot of us. And so a lot of the vets and the old timers, you know, that's the unfortunate part of the, of, of our craft. And so I started doing that. And one of the things that my daughter and everyone in what stuck out to us was, was that personal touch. 
So even when those umpires were just blowing calls and such, as I was a dad at that time, I, you know, be realistic for a minute. Um, it was, it was, you know, pulling your hair out, but it's like, what could you say to this, this, this guy who's out there busting his butt, you know, yeah, he might be older, but he's just trying his heart out and, and, and just, just being the kids love him. You know, we all have our favorites, you know? And so, you know, when I became an umpire, I, I wanted to do something more. But then when I became my own director, yeah, it was, okay, how can I connect with these families and the kids? How can you create this big, great atmosphere? And, 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 you know, one thing that we came up as we were brainstorming was, well, let me back up once a second, all my umpires, all the guys that work with us, like, they are either a one of our friends from previous things, people I trusted when I said this, let's do this, let's go, let's make, bring it on. I called up a lot of those guys and said, this is what's happening. Are you, you know, are you, would you be interested? And, and, and y'all know how I am. And so Justin, I train and I press and I teach and I talk a lot up to the guys about, I want them to be like me out on a ball field to an extent. You know, I can get away with certain things that others can't, but that's just because you build a relationship with families and these yeah. kids and the parents, and you know them all from, from 8U to 18s, yeah. and, and now comes 16, 18s, and you have a situation, you don't have a situation now because they trust you, and even if they disagree with you, yeah. and, and so that's where it all started was training and working with these guys, and so anyway, I... I wanted to do something that would show recognition that wasn't that big a deal. It wasn't something that was supposed to be extra, but I wanted this little one who made this diving play or made a hit a bomb was her very first home run. And, and, you know, okay. Again, another truth bomb for you. You know, we give out softballs in previous years, but previous years, the softballs were only 30 bucks a dozen, you know, and now they're 80 to $90 a dozen, unless, you know, you spin anyway so it's very hard to give out a eight ten dollar ball every time right so my wife and i were like huh what can we do and and um you know uh in our previous before the little one came into our life uh one of our favorite things to do was was go out to a casino and go have buffet and enter and play 20 bucks and maybe you know we win and so we got these cool idea of poker chips and yeah. so I went all in on these poker chips. Like, I mean, they're legit and real. Oh, well, I know cool. my daughter has too. Oh, <laughs> she earned those, brother. She earned yeah, she, those. Well, I'll, let me get into the one story. <laughs> okay, cool, cool, cool. cool. So, so when we also, when we started, you know, one of my main things I wanted to press to people, as everyone already knew me anyway, right, for this, but, you know, stay humble, hustle hard. And, and, and staying humble means the world. And so when I when I was a young umpire, even, you know, I was timid a little bit, but as I grew, I never got upset with people. I, and, and I don't get upset on a ball field. You know, I don't, I don't care if you're yelling at me and you're cussing at me. Now, mind you, that's happening. We're having a different type of discussion and you will be going other places, but that's a last resort. I've tossed three people in, in 12 years. And, and mind you, if you're getting tossed by Brian, yeah, you heard you it. Something bad. No, you I promise you, hurt. you did something. I can talk you off a ledge, man. And 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 it's Justin. It's really hard as a as as a coach to keep yelling at an umpire who's not yelling back yeah. and hearing, "Oh, I hear you, coach. I understand." Yeah. I, I mean, and and it stops immediately. So so, you know, I know we're touching a little but a lot here, but you know we these coins came involved because I want these kids to have something to feel good. Then little did I know uh, my wife knew this because she's all about social media and, you know, my wife, she's a girly girl. And I love that about her because she can bring that presence to the combination of what we do here. These kids, I started passing out these coins, man. And these kids started taking pictures of themselves and posting them on Instagram and all their little other social media sites and tagging us. Yeah. And next thing I know, bro, they're, it's pride. It's just, right. it's a layout coin, man. And so we, it started out as just a home run instead to save money on the home run balls, but to give recognition at the same time. And bro, it just took off too. And so now these kids all fight over it. So the new, the teams that are new to us, 
um, new to legacy teams and they continue to come. Um, some of them, you know, one of the umpires was like, hey, toss this to them. And they're like, hey, what is that? You know, and to them, it's nothing at first. And then they always come up to me or the director, whoever's running a tournament up to the TD booth and ask what it's for. I'm like, oh, you've got one of those cool I five. What did you do? And so next thing you know, it creates a super cool conversation. And I'm like, great. And so my wife does something also, by the way, that's um, really great. We do an after the after event post every weekend. And we do it, it, it. We post pictures of our of our of our uh, champions of the kids throughout the weekend, and all these kids known Brian for years. And so it's been a running joke, but to the guys on the crew, but the kids fight over taking selfie pictures with me. <laughs> and so now they've gotten this selfie picture mode, and with these. So now the kids are playing harder, right? For 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 what is this really? Nothing, right? In in reality. Right. but it's everything to them. And so these kids now fight to take, to take these pictures. So that's really where it came from and went to Bannon. So it's a, it, it's, it's really a cool, good feeling type thing. You know, um, I, I've seen, I see other programs give out bomb squad shirts or, or like for home runs and, yeah. and, and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, I mean, that stuff's neat and all, I, I mean, I would want one too. I, I do take pictures with all those too, but this was just something subtle and it turned out to be huge, huge. Yeah. Let me jump into my daughter Keely's story. She has two of those. She got one for a performance. I don't know what she did, but it, it was for performance. But this other one wasn't for performance. It was actually a connection an umpire had with her. So she, um, it was about a year and a half ago. She it was she had gone through, uh, almost two years ago, sorry, uh, she had gone through knee surgery. She had, she was just born with her femurs at, at 18 degree angle and then the lower bones, the other direction about 19. So she was off like 36, 37 degrees. And so her feet were constantly coming out. She ran funny. Uh, I mean, nothing you wouldn't notice from the side, but from behind you'd see, why is her feet going out this way? And so um, she, had, uh, she had surgery on both of those knees to straighten them out. And um, so she was in rehabilitation, but she got to be able to play at a certain point. And the umpire was asking her, hey, what's up with your knees and that kind of stuff. And this umpire had double knee surgery too. And so she got to explain what she was going through. She's, hey, I'm rehabbing for double knee surgery, this, that, and the other. And he's like, oh, hey, I had double knee surgery, you know, 10, 15 years ago too, and that kind of stuff. And so they bonded on that. And that's why she got the coin. And that was her first coin. And so I heard about yeah. that. And it's like, oh my God, this is why I go, he, I go, Brian's humanizing the umpires where, you know, the umpires, a lot of umpires, you know, when they don't have what you're doing with the coins come out and, you know, they're going to stand tall, you know, with their chest. Hey, I'm, you know, I'm going to be calling the game, all that, you know, professionalism and stuff like that. This really, it, then I, I made the connection of why your tournaments are so um, extremely they pleasant back. when it comes from the, the parents and the coaches and even the players, because the players now, the Thank umpire you. isn't that one meanie who calls a, you know, calls it against them. It's, it's, they're like, Oh, it's, I know, it's I know easy. him. I know her. It's, it's, it's fantastic. It really oh, just, really you're, you're making my day right now yeah. by recognizing that because that's been my number one, that's been literally the number one for me. And it's what's built our program and, and, and people play with legacy solely for that connection. You know, I always tell people, bro, I'm not right or wrong on my calls. I, I, I will always give you my best. And if I am, you know, here's what I, my approach is, you know, like, okay, like, like last weekend, I, I umpired a bunch of 10U games this weekend. I love 10U, man. It's so much fun because it gives me a chance to coach a little bit and teach the game and, you know, the bringing them in type stuff. But, you know, these kids, they just – they, they see a lot of these umpires and the umpires come in and they want to start a clock mm -hmm. in the clock, get paid, go home. Yeah. And, and, you know, that's not, that's not improving the game. That's not improving. It's the, it's, it's okay. More than the game. It's, it's life. Yeah. And you're talking about life skills. Justin, if I can have a, if you call time, and you want to come talk to me and you come talk to me about it about a play that you disagree with the call and those kids see you and i discussing not raising our voice we're this far apart we're talking 
And I'm, I'm going to say, you know, coach, we might have to just, we may have to agree to disagree on this decision, but guess what, coach? I hear you. I understand what you're saying, but I have to make a decision. And right now that's the decision I need to make. Are you, you know, are you okay with that? And, 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 you know, uh, it's, it's 10 out of 10 times that coach says, Hey, thank you, blue. And they walk away and there's so much more value in that yeah. because now your daughter and everyone else's daughter, the other team, the parents see this interaction and they're not all up and upset with you. They're not upset with me. Yeah. They see the compassion. They see the heartfelt, you know, feeling of, but at the same time, my job is to make a decision and, and, and it's not always the best decision or I'm sorry, it's not always the decision that you want to hear. Okay. But it is the decision. I, uh, I umpired a varsity game a couple weeks ago solo, because again, we're, we're, uh, hurting for umpires down here, man. And I was, I did a high level, high level, um, a game. I did not want to do by myself, but I had to, and there was a play at second base where oh, no. and I, I, I came up and out to go towards third. So I get a really good angle. Right. And, uh, it was a swipe tag on the outside right. and she did a little hook slide around second to mind you, I'm behind, you know, home plate area. -ish. I want to that's it's a hard call. call. And I'm yeah. ducking and trying to weave through and get a good positioning as I'm sitting. Yeah. And, and, you know, um, I had no tag, you know, I, 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 the rule of thumb for you coaches that need to hear this <laughs> is rule of thumb is, is you cannot call it out unless you see it. That's and, right. And, no, absolutely. Okay. And so I will call you safe. That's the way it goes. You don't call yeah. it out unless you have an out. And that's where I do press to you coaches. Feel free to call time. You know, one of my speeches is, Hey, coach, wait till ball reaches a circle. Once the time's granted, you're more than welcome to come and talk to me. If you talk to me, we get places. If you don't talk to me, you're going places. Is that fair, coach? And then, you know, it's always like, wow, that's a good one, coach. That's a good yeah. one. Blue got you. And, and so that coach called time. And he wanted, you know, he's, he, you remember what my speech was during the pregame. And he came over and I said, I said, coach, we, I'm loving you want to talk about this because then I had a hard time and I got out there and, you know, and then, and such and I had that angle I thought you know I, I said but honestly I could not see a tag I can't I cannot call so it was a good coachable moment for him yeah to understand that you know a true official will not and I repeat this will not or should not right. um, make an out call unless you have an out and, and that's the time where you coaches it is acceptable to call time and come talk to us or ask us for ask our partner for help you know, because your partner could have a bobble, they could have, you know, off the bag, they can have several things, you know, and so it's, um, or they could just be out of position, how the players maneuvered themselves for the play, mm -hmm. or their block, and they're uh, kind of like, blocking, oh my gosh, yeah. I didn't see that at all, I need to defer to you, would you see, you know, have a conversation, mm -hmm. so, yeah, that's awesome. yeah, so, so, you know, there's um, a lot of value to this game, more than just, between the lines. You know? Well, I'm starting to see some of your admin trickle in here. So who consists of your admin team and gets everything done <laughs> behind <laughs> scenes besides you? Well, you know, we actually have a bigger crew than a lot of people think. Um, but at the same time, the main, main stuff is my wife and I. Um, Dustin Hall, the main owner, is um, very big behind the scenes because he does all the shirt. We, we own our own print press and everything. Right. So he does a lot of the in, uh, ins and outs of that kind of stuff but um my wife shannon is she she does all of our social media stuff hey, bring her in let her let her tell yeah her. um shannon you around oh yeah hello hello there <laughs> that's weird should i come around the other side sure if you want to you look fine you're coming through just fine but okay, if you want to grab a chair and get awesome. a little more comfortable you can um, yeah, there, this is a small office space. <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> so, just, okay. so Shannon, you do the marketing. So tell, tell me about the social marketing you do for Legacy Sports and how you get everything prepped for Brian to knock it out of the park. So he, as soon as he gets his schedule, yeah. Um, yeah, he couldn't do it without me. <laughs> just oh, I know out. this. <laughs> um, so I don't doubt that. <laughs> he, you know, we work on, he works on his, his schedule, getting um, all the events planned. And then um, there's a quite a bit that goes into doing it. So um, <laughs> I do, I actually make our own flyers and every, 
I don't know if you've ever been to our social media and seen the flyers that we put out yes. there um, and everything, but every photo of every girl that is in that is a photo oh that God. I took during the event. So, Which is where that connection we were talking yeah. about. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and, and personalizing those permits yeah. and those posters. Yeah. yeah. So it's really because the whole point of, or like one of the things that we wanted to stick with when, um, when we started this was that, you know, a lot of organ, I don't know if I can say that, but like a lot of organizations in our opinion started yes. straying away from um, the girls and making it about the kids and the yeah. experience and the importance of like, you wouldn't have this without these kids mm -hmm. and their interests and, and, um, you know, you know, Hi. you know, female sports and we're building <laughs> these, you know, young ladies and stuff. So it was really important that what we just kept doing? that there. So there's a few what things that we do. It's, we have what the, we're, we're, um, we're, we're talking yeah. about softball. Yeah. So I create the flyers. Um, I use our, I go out to each event and I take photos of the girls so we can use our own pictures of um, girls who've actually played in our events. And then and they we, all know her now. We kind of, <laughs> some of them. She, she's I'd very modest hi. about some of this. She doesn't grasp and very how many followers we have and they all know Shannon or Brian's <laughs> wife, they call her. Um, so, which is great, you know? So yeah. then, um, then we had, we started with just Facebook and we just wanted to reach, you know, the parents and, you know, um, just go through word of mouth because being such a new and small organization, you know, to gain their um, trust that we're a legitimate organization and that our, you know, our goal is to expand and grow and have a place for these girls to play where they could, they actually will get somewhere with it, you know, back to travel ball, back to competition, back to, well, you know, the life athleticism, skills. life, yeah, 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 you know, that yeah. stuff, you know, have um, umpires that are, you know, out there engaging with the girls and well, want went, to be there and yeah, coaching went. them through the, the um, you know, plays and talking to the coaches and communicating yeah. with them and all that stuff. So yeah, we... Okay. We well, then do that well, in then, our social media yeah. posts. You know, we do engagement posts. I don't just do yes. flyers, That's you know, so say. sometimes I do like engagement posts mm. where, you know, we're just mm. having fun because everybody mm. loves the sport. So <laughs> Shannon, Shannon um, believes in not just it? flyers come and say, hey, come play this tournament. It's like like you said, I'm grateful you pressed on that earlier. You know, she wants to touch on how can we get the families and people to interact with us and give share their own experiences give a moment of let them have a, their memory that they want to share you know and remember yeah so I do these it was like so important to me especially when I started doing the photography that um we always highlighted the athletes that played in our you know game so I do the it you know, it, it's like time consuming and, you know, I'm up all night doing it, but it was so important to me that everyone got the recognition for the events that they won. You know, I thought yeah. that was cool. I, I've just, I, I went on other social media sites and I just didn't see a whole lot of, unless it was something like, um, you know, the, the highlight players and stuff that like, um, well, yeah, but those are, in, those are individual teams you know, doing yeah. them to so, themselves. So in the events, I'm yeah. like, well, who won? You know, like you have to go to the website to do it. But I'm like, how cool is that for these girls who are like there on social media and see like, you know, they could show their friends like, yeah, this is what I do. Look at my accomplishments. And, you know, that is an accomplishment. Which is why you know, she went to Instagram. So I make a video recap of all, you know, photos that either I take or I encourage parents to send me if they're okay with it. You know, everybody signs a waiver, a photo waiver though, but, um, you know, the girls will send or they'll take pictures with Brian or their umpire and stuff. And so I'll just put together a little short one minute, um, you know, slideshow and yeah. And, um, and then in the post, I will like write the team who, you know, our 10 U champion, our, our 12 U champion, our finals, you know, so Hi. their team name is Hi. on there too. And they just, you know, unless you can come over, <laughs> I'm a couple hundred miles. So, away, yeah, I think it goes. I think all of that kind of goes into like the advertising to show people. You know, when you go to play Legacy, you're not just playing. You're not just paying to play an event. 
you are you are playing an event it because you know you like it's the yeah. sport you know it's for the sport it's not for the um oh legacy sports um business organization well well also you know, it's, 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 it's not the cookie cutter every yeah. single weekend yeah. There's programs out there that run every single weekend and it's the same format, the same thing. It's the same, nothing changes, medals, shirts, and a trophy. Like, you know, and so we, we, and again, that's why I mentioned earlier, we call them events, you know, and not tournaments. So, you know, so to recap with Shannon, like, so Shannon's main, uh, you know, help in all of this is Facebook exposure, like Instagram. She does Facebook for the families. She does Instagram for the kids. Mm-hmm. There's a combination of that right there that draws a buzz. And, and so Shannon, then I thought out, we, we thought outside the box right away. And we're like, one thing I always loved was seeing photographers out there. And so that's when we bought the camera and the, and the business, we, we got the whole, we have a, our own, the, we call it the river blue, get it? The river blue smug mode. So we, Shannon, you know, didn't quite, she didn't know what the river blue was. So, uh, you know, for those of you guys know, you know, it's the, the river on the corners, you know, so, and the plate. So it was really neat that we started a whole photography program, which is an entire job in itself. I mean, Shannon's hours oh are, my God. it's tough. Yeah. It's, it's so tough. Well, um, you know, you have to, one, you have to be out there to take the pictures, you know, and then you have, I, you know, to, so I'm not, I've never played softball. I'm not like, you know, Brian and everybody, I had to learn recently the game, you know? And so, um, so just knowing where to look to shoot and, um, and also, you know, um, what I do know is girls, right? So I, you know, I try to get like flattering photos of these kids that they'll look at and they'll be like, oh, that's me instead of like, oh no, you know, right. that's me. So there are some funny ones and some like the feminine side of it comes out. But, These girls don't want to be girls yeah, and take pictures, yeah. but then they want to be like, I'm baller. Here, take a picture right. of me this way. And so you know, they're athletes. Yeah. So yeah. we've really we've really progressed with this idea. And and now, you know, uh, we have a website and we sell our photos every week. Um, very, very, very cheap, right, reasonable prices because we don't want them to have to spend a lot of money. The whole point isn't for us to make a ton of money on that. We just want to get, provide you to something. Make, you have to make a profit. Otherwise you do, of course. I mean, that's the business aspect. Then, and of course, I mean, that is a $5,000 camera. So you, know, you got to make our money back on that. Yeah, but, so it's but the, the photos and then yeah. editing the photos takes the entire next day. Yeah. So, so, I want this question to be for both of you because you're going to have different perspectives on this. Is that, um, no matter how well you prepare for a tournament, what goes wrong every time, no matter how well you prepare for it? <laughs> uh, you want to try to answer that first? Um, like, um, From her perspective. Let's hear right, that. Right, right. No, no matter how well you prepare for it, it always goes wrong. Um, oh, my God. I know, it, it, almost, it almost feels like everything's wrong until you start the tournament. Gotcha. Yeah. You know, um, there, I mean, from my perspective, and this is just what I hear going on in my own home, you know, it's uh, either weather related, right? Uh, every single that. cancellation is either there was a fire and it's too smoky outside or it was raining or, you know, our, um, we almost canceled our first one because it was, you know, travel and snow and stuff was going on. And that's always just last minute. Like we're ready to leave the, out the door. And then all of a sudden something, you know, out of everybody's hands happens, yeah, weather, weather um, stuff. you know, and then there, there's been several times where a team will cancel last minute, um, that's tough. last minute you know um there's been some so sickness that, last month and a half you know, yeah like the six hour throwing up thing that's been going on <laughs> oh bedford teams it hit it hit us about oh yeah we, we got it too um, yeah last okay, one, but so you got it too yeah okay oh yeah we did yeah. it was rough um yeah so um, i mean yeah i mean there's there's more um just well, to answer the actual, the actual the yeah. actual fault i don't care what it is Weather related, you can't control. What can you right, control? Right. But it just goes. But wrong. something that's every single time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, uh, and, and 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 all re- and actually, I mean, to be able to answer that truthfully, Justin, it's um, I'm so proactive. Yeah. On everything, and I'm I'm very well known for that. And I'll sometimes I'll spend three, four in the morning, um, up for four or five days pre pre to an event to double cross, double check, 
talk, talk, you know, my I's and T's and cross them and, and to, to make sure that those things don't happen because I've learned what not to do by others. Okay. And so that's why it's hard to answer this question for you. I, I think, I think the one thing, one thing that can go wrong in a tournament is when you have a big tournament, you got multiple teams with the same names. Okay. That gets difficult for some of the umpires to keep track of the teams because sometimes they'll write down blue versus red or they'll write, oh, it's the purple team or the other team we are. And, you know, because let's be real for a second, true officials, real officials, okay, they don't keep score. Like an umpire's job is to run the game. Now, when you get out travel ball umpiring, it's different. You're responsible for the score. You're responsible for the game. And so that's one of the – that's one thing. Scores. I think scores to, to make because because on our website we make sure the moment that game's finished, we we put we post online. I got I got I got families coming from anywhere and everywhere. They might be at a hotel room, you know, whatever the reasons are. I believe in getting that score online immediately. That I hear the word ball game. I want that umpire to give me that score right then and there. I can put it in there. And now so and so's mom or grandma and so and so's watching the game. They know exactly what the score is, what's going on. And, and their sport now. Well, and then the competitors, the other competitor teams know what the outcome of that because they're. Yeah. Good. Oh, right. Yo, there's you know, a lot of people. pitching and who's, who's going to be playing. Yeah. Where? Oh, no, it's yeah. all, it's all relative. Yeah. yeah. And so, so the speed on that is, is a plus. It is. And, and, and I get a great amount of emails and compliments that, Hey, you're on it. You, you stay yeah. on that score. It's updated. I mean, I, at the same thing, if you have an 8 PM game for an example. Yeah. And and your game's now not finished till 9 15, 9 30. Okay. Yeah, the first game tomorrow morning in bracket. And if you got a game early, you need to know your scores. You need to text out your families. You need to make sure that everyone understands what's really going on here tomorrow morning. And if I'm lagging, I'm over talking, or we're, you know, the umpire's out doing his thing and they're not reporting the score immediately, then we have a, you know, a, a situation. And 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 now I'm getting blown up as a tournament director. There's nothing worse. And then where I was going with this was getting the score correct online if, if if you go back to your hotel and you're out of town and you're now at your hotel and it's now 10 o'clock or more and there was a mistake and now the tournament director is reaching out to you to say hey you're not playing at 10 or 11 or 12 you're no, actually playing because at 8, 8 a.m because something's wrong we fixed it right and now it changed everything yep. yeah. bro yeah, see, that's, that's one, one of the out. things that might a lot of people don't realize how are tough on me yeah. because at the end of the night, when your umpires, you know, as you said earlier, you know, the complexity of our umpire crew, we're a family, especially legacy umpires. We call them our blue crew. And we love to go out with each other afterwards, even if it's just to go get a burger. Um, you know, not a lot of us are doing other anything extracurricular, act like, you know, drinking or going to bars or having that kind of fun. But I mean, we like the camaraderie of what we do. So when we go to Medford, we all go to dinner together. We all rent an Airbnb. We all stay together. We like, you know, and so if those guys are trying to get out to do all that and I'm here and having a responsibility trying to get the scores correct and all that, you know, it's a, uh, so now we press to our guys and our crew. Some, we have some female umpires as well, by the way. So they, yes. they come in and we got to make sure that we get those scores correct guys. Like, like, you know, I got to get that right. So um, that's one of the things I, I press every week during my pregame meeting to uh, all the umpires. Good. So for me as a travel baseball coach, and I get, I'm getting my team ready for a tournament. Um, we have our normal routine, the pregame routine. Uh, do you guys have like a pregame routine as a tournament organization, like the sure night do. before to talk to the umpires or maybe an hour sure before do. the tournament? Uh, can I explain a little bit about that? Sure, sure. So uh, one of the things that is mandatory with us is you need to be dressed and ready 30 minutes prior to your game start. Therefore, now at that 30 minute mark, if we're running into, you know, uh, weather issues or whatever, something that needs to go now or we, we, we know what's going on, um, we can make that happen. Now, you know, we, we make we're pretty strict on that, actually. You know, I, that's the one thing I do expect the professionalism part of that. So there we're able to have a good 10 or 15, sometimes 20 minute meeting about depending on what day it is, Saturday or Sunday. Um, Saturday, it's kind of the generalization of, of what teams are there. If there's any coaches that we've had issues or we, we, we you know, I want to make our family, our, our guys alert of, um, we all have a list of, of, of certain programs that, that are um, sometimes get a little more edgy than others. And so 
I prep my guys, I prep our girl, we prep our crew for these games. And it's, and, 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 you know, it's super important to me. And even if it's the same speech, even if it's the same, but I always choose a rule, right? So I got a really cool checklist right here of some um, different, you see, everybody, I, of, of things that we discuss, um, you know, there's about 50 different things you can go over when you pregame with your, um, with your partner alone, yeah. you know, that we, that we touch base with. And um, so I, I, I'll choose that and I'll randomly pick something or something that, or I'll have a note from the previous weekend. Hey guys, you know, let's talk about this pitching rule. Let's talk about this clarification. You know, hey guys, I heard, you know, someone said, I mean, the worst thing you can hear on a ball field, by the way, is, you know, is, well, hey, on that field, they let us do this. And then, you know, coach right, right. this game, guess what? I apologize for one of the other things. We're going to do it this way. And if you have any issues, we can talk with the director. Yeah. And, you know, and it's, it's that simple. So, um, yes. Now, Sunday mornings, I have a nice discussion. It's usually Sunday mornings are pretty close to the same Sunday morning speech. But it's where it's just reminding them, hey, guys, you know, I know, remember, we what we call legacy it up. Yeah. On Saturday, we legacy it up, talk it up, have a good time, high fives. Now, on Sunday morning comes. Bracket play. It's bracket play. I want, I, I hate using the word but thicker skin, but, you know, gentlemen, ladies, be That's ready that, that it's, it's your, please use your communication skills. Please use your people skills. Please remember why you're a part of legacy. And, 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 and that just goes so, so far, Justin. And like you touched out earlier about the calmness to our families, to the, because one thing I don't want is your, you as a coach or your parents behind me sitting there and spewing and holding it in. Yeah. And next thing you know, you've got a blow. Okay. And that's where we come in and we can solve that by, in, and that's where the agree to disagree comes in. I need you to know why I made my, my call. I don't care if you like it or not. I, 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 but what I do care about is that, you know, why I made it, you don't have to agree. And now we've got a common ground. So that's um, my speech every day. Every Sunday is very important to set the table. So when's your next tournament? What's, what's coming up? I got one. What's today? <laughs> Today's Wednesday. Today's the 29th. We got I believe uh, first and second coming up uh, this week. Yeah. So I've got um, in two days, I got a pretty massive event um, in Folsom okay. called the Bats and Bows Tournament. Yeah. Um, and right now we're hindering on a little bit of rain. Um, I got some phone calls out to, you know, I got a handful of people that help us at any time and all the time for prepping fields and such that when we are in emergency mode. So tomorrow morning, we will be going out to um, shop backing some top water off these fields and getting, and well, we still have Friday to uh, prepare and I got, you know, quick dry and all that we're going to take. So, so my next tournament's this coming weekend. Um, I believe I'm sitting on 39 teams this weekend, actually. And uh, it's, it's a pretty good event. I got tens, twelves and 14 playing. Oh, good. And then, the following weekend, we're taken off because it's Easter, and I believe in family time, and I want the family, I want the kids, and such. So there's some tournaments that are going on. They do one dayers and things, and yeah, they you know, that's good and all, but we need a break. You know, I want my fa I want my crew and our 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 people to go visit, spend some time with their families. You know, we work a lot, but then the 15th and the 16th, I have over 85 teams coming between Medford and um and 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 um Folsom. Oh, you got, so you got two events, two separate events. I will be running two different events, and one in Oregon, one in California, and uh, we're gonna we're calling the one up in Medford is the Turf Wars. It's something that you know they they adopted up there for years, and I just I I I kept the name the same. I don't want those little kids coming up to me and telling anything like not the the May event, yeah. And then um so to piggyback that, I called the uh, Folsom tournament Dirt Wars. And right. little did I know, Dirt Wars took on just as much power and, and explosion as others. So, and actually, that I'm fubbing those numbers a little bit. We're, we got more teams in SAC than I thought I did, actually, because we picked up a bunch today. So, um, yeah, we got two major tournaments. All April's full. We've got uh, May is pretty packed. In May, we'll be in, we'll be in all the states in May, by the way. We'll be between... I'll be hitting uh, Nevada. I got a tournament in Nevada. We got a tournament in obviously every weekend in Folsom, but uh, we'll be rocking that 
that May Halloween in May tournament there. Uh, and then after that, June comes and that's when out. school's out. Right. They blast out. And we actually have an event we call um schools out and um uh, and we it's already full yeah i mean we i think i could wiggle a little bit of room if anyone's interested but uh we got and that's in garnerville a hidden gem beautiful right, you beautiful. mentioned that earlier where oh. you guys from nevada can come over the the hill <laughs> yep that's the yeah, see well, I, I i'm learning it. i'm learning i love it hey it took me a long time to learn your guys' stuff up there brother oh, yeah. and, uh, i'm grateful man built some cool relationships for the but the lingo, you know, one thing I like about Garnerville, you know, by the way, to go back to Garnerville a little bit, you know, I have daughters, we have daughters, you know, and, and, and such. And so, I, you know, it's very clean there. Like, they don't even lock their doors most of the time there. Right. Like, it's there. The homeless situation is is kind of non-existent well, over it's there. Away from I five, everything seems to be like on the I five corridor from CDA yeah, yeah. To, uh, well, and and, and Garner, Garnerville's on the other side of Lake Tahoe. Right. It's, it's fun stuff too, and yeah. it's fun stuff. And that particular right. weekend, they they have a, a celebration called Carson Valley Days. And Carson Valley is the entire side of of Nevada over there on the other side of the hill of um um the, the Lake Tahoe side. So they celebrate the whole thing there's these carnivals and, and vendors and there's all this going on. So back in the day, they would, you for many, many years, they used the one park and they just ran a slow pitch tournament. And that was kind of one of the highlights to Carson Valley days. They sh uh, And then, so when they reached out to us, you know, we made it turn into, we have five fields over there we can use. And um, you know, it's a fast pitch tournament. So now it's turned into something for the families as well and and what oh so really cool thing also they shut down the entire town and do it a really big um parade and it remind the first year we did it it reminded me of like texas style football like on a friday night right. like the friday whole night. town was gone and like everybody the night before there were all these like lawn chairs and super old school lawn chairs too by the way right. it reminded me of like when i was a little kid in, in the like, 80s yeah, they remember the cross green, all oh, that. Oh yeah, yellow, you white. All through those yeah. things, and yeah, the one they'd fold up on you. Yeah, they were they lined the street, and it's like and it's like an entire darn near mile long. Um, so it's 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 a great experience over there, and um, so those are some of the events coming up, and and then come the you know some of my our highlight events, you know, um, you know we we have a really really fun one that we do it's if you guys have never experienced this before you've got to try it at least once it makes emotions with some of the parents but we do an all-night event in reading and uh I, I do i did the 48 hour last year it was as a parent yeah, it's just me and my daughter and my wife and my son were i remember you were there yeah and i i was pounding 200 milligrams celsius starbucks <laughs> shots and you know, it was it, it is actually really nice because uh, when when it, we were playing, our first game was 3 a.m. They're at, they're at the ball field like at 145 yeah. for a 3 a.m. game. Yep. And I've never seen Reading VLD so busy with so many people and all the fields, lights on. This oh. was like, it was like, you know, like 730 in the evening. No, this was 3 a.m. And, and it went you all the way to like 6 a.m. once the sun came up. It's like, okay, go home, come back at noon or two or something like that. Yeah, and you couldn't even tell that it was that time. Like the the energy five was, o'clock. I can't remember when you came. Energy that was flowing though was just so incredible. Yeah. And and um, you know, but just for those of the of those of you out there that that need to hear this, you know, I bracket very safely, very appropriately. The, right. the if, if you had an early game, because we start at 10 p.m. on Friday night, and I usually do age appropriate, right? So I start with the 10s and the yeah. 12s and 14s and 18s as they needed. Um, I also based on some of the teams that were able to play in their certain time game and their distance right. from the fields yeah yeah you know so that made so what i did was like any of the games that started around 10 to, to midnight to one in the morning those teams that finished their bracket play I'm, I'm sorry their pool play games they didn't start bracket play until all the other teams had a chance to finish out theirs and then we actually took a three hour i want to say it was a three hour break in the morning on saturday morning um that away it also gave it what it did was it gave every team a 10 hour break after their pool plays. Well, so, cool. so it became safe and all that. And then once bracket play came, it was cool. But I don't know if you remember the rules. I changed the rules up a little bit. So Remind Mr. I, um, earlier, I used to be a big uh, 
slow pitch guy. And so back in our slow pitch days, we used to do some of these fun things. So I actually added a few different fun rules for pool play. Um, I, we do, we start with one-on-one -on -one count. Okay. Oh, right. Yeah. right. Remember that we started, I showed, we start with a one-on-one -on -one count for pool play. Speeds the game up. We got almost seven innings in a bunch of times. It's just so cool. It's so much fun. Um, every second inning, we put a runner at second base just for fun. Um, um, and then uh, we had mulligans. You could have up to three mulligans. They yes, the mulligans. You could, like, I remember it was uh, in the early afternoon on the next day. But is it just pool play you have the mulligans? It was only pool play. But early in the morning, we did have a couple pool play games in that I, one. I, I watched a game where a guy did it three times with the same hitter. Yeah, and I, she got out, you know, popped up. Okay, no, you're gonna hit again. And yeah. he used them because it was like the last game of pool play, and so he just he spent he just used them because he had them. Hitter. Yeah, yeah, I mean, right. I got, I bought them or whatever. Yeah, I bought them already. And, and what so was she so hit fun. like three times in a row, and I thought that was so cool. I was like, well, what was what is cool about it, bro, is what we did is we took that money and um, um, we made, I, I want. I want to say it was like twelve hundred dollars or so, or eight, anywhere. I, it was like it was around a thousand dollars we we made on that. And what we did was we donated it to the burn victims up there and to a, to, a, to a, so in Reading, you know, as you and you guys too in Oregon, you know, we had a lot of fires and smoke damage and things. And personally, we knew many people that lost homes and and everything. So what our goal was was to help out the fire victims, kids that needed help. Yeah. So we donated that money to a couple families and we didn't just donate it to some program. Like, you know, right, right, right. Right. we, we actually, your, in your pool. yeah, yeah. We went to personal on it, man, and found some people that were affected and we helped out. And yeah. so all, you know, we, we generated that income for the families, you know, yeah, um, that's great. So I, I mean, again, like we touched base earlier, like we try to do everything we can for others. And that's another one. The other big one event we do, you guys is uh, uh, we have our freedom rings tournament. We give out real rings um and the girls just absolutely love that fourth yeah, of july by chance uh i do a fourth of july term my, my ring oh, no, the freedom rings is that the my freedom okay. rings so okay. oh man you're gonna give me uh talking about this so <laughs> well no 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 it's it's an emotion it's it can get a little emotional for me for this for this one because oh. because freedom rings we we celebrate september 11th okay and sure, and we right. honor we honor september 11th and celebrate you know America at that time. So freedom rings, rings, but double freedom. entendre and then the sound off of. Yes. And That's so cool. with that said, you remember the year before when uh, we went into Afghanistan and our president Biden pulled out all the troops and we were ambushed in, in uh, at the airport. And there were 13 Marines that were killed and ambushed. And one of them was from, from Roseville, which is, 10 minutes from us we all knew her uh people knew her it was a big emotional it was a big big time you know and right. so well, then and the then to find was in Folsom and he was actually yeah there was a survivor well that was a year after um he 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 went in uh, hide. he went he went into hiding but my wife's talking about there was a survivor um from Folsom I'm sorry no no it wasn't from it was it was there but they came into Folsom and did this big speech and, and it was very touching. And so anyway, what we do is we try to honor that to that weekend. And um, it grew extra meaning that year when those 13 um, soldiers were, were killed. And so what we did was we went out and we printed all the pictures of, of each person. And, and, and that's a huge event for us. So we run actually four or five different locations, not just fields, four or five locations. It gets really big for us. And so what we did is we made 13 um, photos um, and we, we, we made them really nice. And so we, we each park, we set up a, like a little display, some bunch of flags and, you know, we really we honor it. But so, um, I'll, yeah, I want to share, yeah. yeah, I'll share that too. But it was, um, it, it gives all these families, because we don't charge gate fees at our, our events. I right. don't agree with gate fees. Um, and so what that, it, what that said, what that does is that brings in all these family people that get to watch their kids play or great grandparents and they're all on fixed incomes and such. So we had all these families coming in and people and seeing these pictures and we watched a lot of emotion, um, and people taking pictures of the pictures and, and, and sharing stories coming up and shaking our hand and stuff. And so, 
you know, um, what my wife was just saying is um, our son is, uh, we have a 24 year old, 24 year old son or so, and, and he's, he's a Marine himself. And um, his unit was one of the units that we're supposed to go to the airport that day and they switched units. And so we really, wow. it's hard to talk about because, you know, we could have been one of those families that had a, uh, got that special phone call from, you know, from the government. So you know, we, we're, we're big fans of trying to do, you know, every one of our tournaments events have meaning and, and there's more to them than just the, the trophy at the end, you know? And so that's one of our favorite events. It's one of everybody's favorite event yeah. just because of, so we, we, I ask a, a, a player or, I have an umpire who's, in a, who, you know, he just moved over to Tennessee, actually. We miss him a lot. Um, but he, he sang the anthem for us at a couple of – we, we, we choose somebody at each park or we reach out. We've had several kids do it. We have a couple of our staff that do it. But we get out there and we, they sing. Um, and anyone that has anything that they'd like to say. So it's, it's, you know, it's really great. That's another one of our big highlight events. So, um, so I do one thoughtful question every podcast. Um, hopefully, this is for both of you because you'll probably come up with different things. But um, during the last three years since you guys start, started with Legacy and, and made it bigger with uh, Dustin, um, is there something that stopped you and caught you off guard that you didn't expect was going to happen? It could be anything. Um, it could be something that something happened to you guys or or something that you didn't expect was going to happen that turned out really great or um, because we yeah, all have actually, these visions and then something out of the ordinary happens. What do you got? Well, that's actually kind of easy to answer for me. All of this. Okay. All of this, because this all started by Dustin giving me a call and saying, Hey bro, I know you're hurting. I know that, that you, you've got to be, I know you've been out of work for months Go over to Klamath Falls, help yourself, help me. That's it. And and it was a moment of when that happened, and and then and then the, the progression. I I I to this minute, to every event I throw, every time I'm at my desk and I'm doing this and I'm getting these calls, I'm truly floored by by the the growth that and and people wanting to play with us yeah. and meeting and the. Oh, it's Brian. Oh, it's Brian. Or now at the ballparks, it's, hey, that's Brian's wife. That's right, Shannon. Right, right, right. And, and because we have so many followers now at these fields and the kids alone, you know, it's, I, I, I'm, we're very humbled. And so that's really, I think for me, it's, it just, I never saw this coming, Justin. There, this was not planned. This was, there was oh, no, it just, that's what I'm saying. It's just happened. It just happened. Do you have anything? You know, from my perspective, it yeah. was him getting work from one of his friends because he was you know basically an independent contractor for six years well or something. before i became a director yeah before but he 10, became a yeah. Direct, yeah and um so you know because our whole relationship for you know i mean i met him when i was 22 i'm going to be 38 now you know yeah. he was a child development teacher and then he just coached and umpired on the side for a little bit so this whole thing just kind of happened so fast but it was very scary in the in the beginning when he was kind of then cast away um you know by somebody who was we thought we had a relationship with a personal one but it, it was just business you know it turns out and then um and when that became a threat you know when he was cast away I was like wow so we're starting from nothing like this has to work out right. and he really you know i don't know any other organization right now where and i know this is going to be true for brian no matter how um, much legacy grows he will always umpire every season at least a game if not every other game he will always be at at least one of the parks directing it because he's going to have multiple parks. There's no, there's no getting around that. He's going to be running multiple parks. He's going to have more than one TD, but he will always be one of them. He is always going to bracket and, you know, um, and make sure that the appropriate teams are, you know, starting in the appropriate games. 
and because he knows and researches all of these I'm teams, impressed. it's not even just that he, um, you know, Thank you. Th throws a, a name in a hat and is like, okay, you're going to play this person. You're going to play right. this person. And I mean, and he's always going to take into consideration the coaches and um, families schedules because, you know, it, even the though travel. he can't, he can't do everything perfect for everybody, you know, but he will try his hardest. He will spend hours to make sure that if you can only do morning games or you only want evening games or whatever it is, he will do, he will re schedule everything just to try to make it work. And if he can, you know, and if he, oh, if he can't, I don't even know if you've ever not done it for somebody, but anyway, he's always going to be, be done, a hands on you'll trust. It you know, couldn't be done. Person. That's what I, that's, so, I'm so that's what flattered I'm right now that she's, I, I, she's, um, thank you, babe, because she doesn't, uh, always sit and hang out in my office, you know, it's doing other things. It's and she's and, and, and well and it's just but but it's I'm oh man, she's giving uh, some feels feeling. right now because it's hard on us sometimes because of the amount what that goes into this. You know, I do spend that extra time and I believe that's what we were talking about earlier, how you know we it's it's customer service based, but but it's not only that, it's I want your experience to be the greatest every time. And I have come to grips and realization that mm -hmm. You can't make everybody happy, but I sure can come close. And, you know, one thing all I ask is to, to be what I'm doing here is if I say something, I, I want you to trust that that is the truth. That ain't just marketing and it ain't just me. You know, off or whatever. You're, yeah, just trying to give you something that you want to hear. You know, I'm very transparent with everybody and and now our reputation is okay if brian says there can't be done i it can't be done and, you know yeah. what, I, what i heard from both of you from both of your responses is opportunity to do legacy was it came out both of your mouths and then gratitude shannon you said it a little differently but brian kind of said it like i'm just happy to be able to do this whole thing mm -hmm. you know yeah. and, and it's just and then you you, you utter gratitude um, differently through words so just the opportunity of this and then gratitude that's the hey that's a great place to be at man having an opportunity and then be grateful for it that's awesome mm -hmm. um, so my last question before we uh, finish this podcast is that what is something that you would like legacy sports to do in the future that yeah. you're not doing right now uh, different and, and love it love it man it's something i've been thinking questions. about heavily 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 and um, one thing that I would like to do is start a, a scholarship program that actually gives these kids something more than just uh, money. You know, uh, there's like we've touched a few times, you know, there's life skills here and there's only so many places these females, these young ladies can go to after the turn after they done with softball. And so that's huge. Um, with that said, there's not a, there, there are kids out there that can't afford what we do, right. you know? And, and so I'm actually a little tie into what Shannon was just saying. I, I can't get off the ball field, Justin. Like that's just, it, it's, 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 I tell people all the time, it's my therapy. I get out there. I'm with the kids. I'm with the families. I'm, I'm not thinking about life. I'm not thinking about my next weekend. I'm not thinking about anything other than what we're doing in front of us. And it's such a joy to the heart like it's so much it's great so I miss coaching heavily and I want and it's starting to progress the conversation more and more I would love to start a legacy elite type showcase team that is where you coaches have no fear that I'm poaching players it is something like where I could co I could sponsor I could grow i could take these kids across the nation and maybe give them an opportunity to play some of these big events get exposure by these college coaches that i'm getting these really good reputations by the way with all these college coaches and stuff so because one of the fears that these families the coaches have out there is they don't want to let their players um you know guest play because they're going to get poached and right and, you know so, so what i'm hearing is let me see if, if what i'm hearing is what you're saying it's like 
maybe like you said, a legacy sports elite team that may play like two or three national tournaments. Yeah, or and five so, or so whatever it, number. Yeah. So you, what you'll need to do is get like coaches that don't poach. You know, mm -hmm. you'll be one of them, of course. Mm -hmm. But um, that's interesting because my son last weekend up in Kennewick is actually on one of those type of teams. Nice. Um, I mean, it's called the, he's on. Well, it's like like a misfit team during blackout season. Okay. But yeah, so okay, but that's actually that's easy to that's easier to do than um, it is. It's really easy to do. I know. You just like you uh, said, uh, you just need to set up the scholarship for that. There's more legs to this than than you think. And, um, okay. I haven't quite shared with my wife too much about sure. that. So, um, but with that said, okay. Majority of my crew, not only are they umpires, but a lot of them have been high level coaches. Oh, nice. I got coaches that have done college, coached uh, high level programs nationally that won national titles. All of us have an in, are invested into the game more than just a paycheck on Monday. Sure. And, and, and so I am surrounded by some really good high level connection people. And nice. I have been reached out by some coaches and that's where the idea came from because they all see my passion when I'm on a ball field you know and um, everyone that's ever seen me umpire they they understand what that means so a scholarship program would be great to start and more than just you know money it's okay. it's you know I I, uh, I would love to see that happen so Shannon what, what was your uh, thought on seeing the future of legacy sports and what you'd like to see in the future possibly um, it's, I just want to see Brian. And so I actually, I don't know how to answer that question because okay. right now, um, and you know, what I, when I tell people what my husband does for work, you know, cause they'll ask me, um, you know, it just, you know, I tell them he runs a youth fast pitch tournament organization and they don't really it doesn't register in their head just you know what it is and so really it's like, largest I just say he's literally living his dream and so I just want to see it continue to be even if it only stayed as successful as, as it is now which I know is is not going to be the case I know that it's going to grow and I know that it's going to get bigger I just want to see him continue or, or legacy sports fast which continue to grow and um I guess I guess like in all um I as it gets bigger I don't want to see it get diluted um okay you know, we, we touched on that yeah earlier. so I, yeah. I think that's just like the only thing I could really think of to like okay. think about it. Well, and I want to say too, you know, Shannon's watched me go through some hard times. She's watched us go through some, you know, the fun times. You know, Justin, I know I say that, you know, I'm running a business and it ain't about money or nothing, but the feeling that we got our very first paycheck, right? Our very first tournament, the one tournament, the state we called, our very first tournament was called stay humble, hustle hard. And then it was let them play was the next, the name of the event. So we had to come up with all these names, you know, and when we, when we got everything dusted, settled and we paid everyone out and got all the expenses and we got our check. And after not having any money and any, and any help for months and months and months, it was like such a, whoa, aha moment that the game of softball who I've been told many times in my 25 years of playing slow pitch and umpiring and everything is, what are you doing? You'll never amount to, You'll never amount to anything. You know, what are you doing? Softball's like, you're, you're wasting your time. And, and here's a game that provided not only for my family, but now we're able to help out all these others, you know, and that's. Well, the, the numbers are growing and here's something I don't know if you know, but last year, the women's college world series grew 275%. I know. The previous year. Yeah. I've been following since 2005 when you dub one back to back in 05 and 06. Oh, yeah. I was just uh, thumbing through ESPN and I was just, oh, let me just watch this college game. And I saw the fast pace and I was like, holy smokes, Co women's college softball is more fun to watch than men's MLB. It's and it's electric. <laughs> it, it's so, yeah. it's, it, the yeah. pace, the pace caught yeah, me pace, up because. Right. 
you know, and that's why they are adding the pitch clock now. They're doing things in Major League Baseball to speed up the game because, you know, you don't need to take 30 seconds between each pitch. Of course. I mean, come on. You don't yeah, need to unwrap it. We all know that what takes I baseball so long. But, and then what I saw was, uh, you know, the top eight teams in the Women's College World Series. I saw some of these girls diving, starting to break. Their basemen starting to break before the ball was even made contact because they could tell that the hands were beating it so yep. far forward that she was going to have to go to her right, laying out, catching a line drive. And I'm like, I don't think a dude could have done that. And, and I was just like, try, try having that feeling when you're watching a ten year old. Oh yeah, do it, bro. I mean, and that's one thing that caught my eye immediately immediately diving over the couches um, immediately yeah. the 10 you what watching these kids at 10 and 12 years old what they're doing with their bodies and and being pure athletes and learning this game that's it's it's actually a complicated game it's not easy yeah to the hit, blood defense pitch. is it's, it's, different it's, it's, a lot it's, you know in the bats what's really funny is some of them, the boys on my 11 year team are like oh man they hit a bigger ball it's easier to hit and i went <laughs> you've never hit a softball Come on I the go, box. Can I hold up a baseball and I say, if you hit it in the middle, it's going to go somewhere. If you hit it here, it's going to go somewhere. On a softball, you hit it in the middle, it's going to go somewhere. You go, you hit it here, it's going nowhere. Yep. Yep. That ball is made differently, and you, and it's not as heavy. Uh, and with her throwing here, yeah, yeah, up and down, inside, outside. I mean, right. the, you can make a softball do things that you can't do with the baseball. Right. Boys with baseball, if you have the, if you're here, if that ball starts here, it can only go down and sideways. Yep. Okay. In mm -hmm. softball, it can go here and then up, up and in, up and yes. down. It's oh. like it can go any different direction, yeah. and you have no, and, and it's in a short. And then if you got someone that's got that filthy balloon floating changeup coming at oh, you yeah. after she's throwing sixty-eight, that breaks. Oh, away from man, you is it fun? That second. Yeah, my daughter has so that. Is an umpire to watch, man. It's, it does a slow rotation like this, yeah. and I'm catching her, and I catch it. And I remember one time with her pitching coach, I put my head down, and she's like, "What?" I go, "I wouldn't be able to hit this pitch. It comes in on the inside third, and it's breaking off. I mean, okay. I, I would make contact, but it'd be on the end of the bat by the time I I would have triggered by the yeah. time that ball came across. It because it's a bigger ball, it moves more when it spins less. Right. And I wouldn't have known that unless I was catching. True. And so it's, yeah, the, if you haven't, I, I, caught, it, no, I mean, yeah, if you haven't thrown or caught fast pitch, it's, you really no. don't know a whole lot. And, and, and that's why I say, you know, I, we, we fall in love with this sport for the girls and then watching these kids at their age. And then, you know, I, I, I often compare, you know, a 10 year old boy to a 10 year old girl, like what they're doing. And man, it's, it's pretty neat. Watching these young ladies just perform, yeah. so and grow, yeah. you know, and 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 then they have different avenues though than the boys do when they get older. You know, and girls have adversity that they're fighting because, you know, hormones are different. Yeah, becoming a young lady, you know, you're talking about a lot of them. You know, anxiety, depression, anxiety. Of, so what are they going to go to school? Image, uh, issues, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Relationships. They, they, I mean, we're Social talking about pressure. babies yeah. growing, young ladies right. growing into having, you know, relationship situations. And so, you know, they have a lot of things different than boys, you know, they're, they're, yeah. they're stacked up against them. So our job, you know, I feel yeah. like our, what we're yeah. really trying to achieve is, is give them yeah, more memories and life skills. Yes. So once they become these young ladies that the circle is bringing right on back. And with that said, my goal at the end of this is to have an all-female crew, and I want all. Oh wow, You're, you'll get it. Let's. Oh, close. We're already close, bro. We have yeah. we have three right now that are pretty dynamite officials, and you know, I want to provide another opportunity for these young ladies to go to college. Right. Come umpire, come umpire for me. I'll train you. I'll teach you what you need to know. All you got to have is the temperament. I'll teach you. I'll teach you those skills. I can't teach you people skills. I can teach you mechanics. I can teach you this, but I can't teach you personable skills, you know? And, and so um, bring it in. I would love the opportunity to give them something to help put them through college if needed. It's a lot. Of, it's a very good income um, for those young ladies that are, you know, I mean, those, those athletes that don't have, you know, I mean, we shoot, bro. I don't know about you and you went to college, but I mean, I, I lived on beans and rice and uh, oh yeah, 
I pitched for a couple of years in college and um, I had a, uh, it was, I couldn't afford anything other than, you know, I mean, if it wasn't for the football players <laughs> bringing their big old chickens and stuff and we right. still, cause uh, where, you know, the, the football players and baseball players live together. So, you know, all the baseball players were poor, it felt like, <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, I want to help out these young ladies and, you know, and, and more. So well, you're going to do that. And just a thought here, maybe an all female coaching staff for that legacy elite team too. I don't know. It's I, can shave. My I mean, the I, all female crew as well. So, I mean, I'll shave whatever it takes <laughs> you know, for that. So, um, I, I, you're not, and, and you know what, and on a serious note with what you just said, you know, it's funny because the, the male coach versus a female coach out there right now, it's, it's the female coaches are starting to get a little more, um, um, a little more ground. Okay. So like college, yeah, you see a lot of female coaches at that level. Um, but you don't always see them as much in the travel level but it's it's picking up it has picked up yeah you know and and obviously you know a female should be able to connect with those young ladies more than a man you know more than a male um and you're not and, and also the other the reason i like a female coach they don't sugarcoat things to their daughters they 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 expect they expect what they're, what they're coaching in, in, in the in the way that they express it better than the the men do mm -hmm. so I get that. I get that. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, Brian, Shannon, hey, thanks for coming on the podcast. Ah, thank you. I appreciate your time and energy and everything you guys do with Legacy Sports. So, awesome. Yeah, awesome. the golf field sometime this year. I have to look at my daughter's schedule, but she's in, she's playing varsity right now, so she won't be with uh, Southern Oregon Fast Pitch Blackout Gold until um, that's over or there's no conflict. I think, wait, she plays uh, April. She, you guys are, yeah, she's actually, I was just going to correct you. You're signed up for April 29th in, um, well, there's another one also, but I'm not quite sure. I'll let your coach tell you that. But you're in a, um, April 29th, I believe you guys are playing in Reading. So you'll be at Big Ooh, that'll uh, be a fun one. I big like that. I love so maybe we can have a little recap uh, to this this conversation. Yeah, absolutely. I would love to get in on one of your, uh, your, your, your uh, videos. Videos, I'll, your I'll, think, I'll, think, I'll think of one for that tournament. I will think of one for that tournament. Your TikToks are great, dude. I, I get it. We, we get a kick out of your stuff, man. So, again, well, thank you for two, inviting us. I've got two that I'm going to be doing that I think are super funny. Um, but I just need uh, – we're going to scrimmage just one team that I used to coach with. So, so I know the whole opponent's parents and everything like that. I've, I've kind of already talked to them about it, and they're totally in on doing this video with me. Oh, I can't wait. And so, um, you know, they can – they could play their part really well, but sure. Jerry did, of course, everything. Sure, changed. of course, always, yeah. And then um, I got to get my son because I have a kid on the team that eats a certain something, and he doesn't want to do it, and I'm I'm okay with that. So I'll still take that and have my son do it, and he was like, "No, Dad, I don't want to do it." Well, keep keep, keep but I got mind, him, you know. I got him going up to Kennewick this weekend to do on the road again. Because mm -hmm. on my on the road again, I show you know how far we travel, the time. Oh yeah, I get that, kind of stuff, that nice little map. I was able to I figured out how to use Photoshop to get that done. And um, but so I, I I was driving, I couldn't do it myself, not without being dangerous, I, you know. Yeah, so I saw he it. did it, and he was so excited to do it. So I'm like, well, maybe he does yeah. want to do the video and everything like that. Yeah. So, um, yeah. But well, yeah, it'll keep us in mind, man. I, I get a kick out of the. The comic gold and you know i think that's <laughs> travel connect, justin you're connecting you're connecting people and and they're connecting you they're, they're relating you know and and there's that's the big picture so um you know as much as you're thanking us hey thank you for what you're doing for the sport so you know. all right <laughs> all right brother i know i'm sure you guys are watching in the background a little bit mark so that's our start over in life yeah that was our so that's Ladies and gentlemen out there, that's what happens if you go to Reno oh for no God. softball for two weeks and um, you take your wife to Reno and um, have, a have a very fun vacation. So oh, on that note, you guys um, enjoy yourselves and we'll see you at a ball field. Cool. <laughs> Thanks, Jess. 
Please join us for our next podcast where we have special guest Bill Rao. He is currently the Southern Oregon University softball hitting coach. He's a Pac-12 network baseball analyst, and he's also was on that two-time 2006-07 Oregon State University National Championship team. He is currently a travel baseball coach like myself for the teams of Southern Oregon Baseball Development.